Hello everyone, I am your friend Shalab Imam and we are currently dealing with the topic of CPM and PERT. In today's lecture, we will see another variation in the network problem. So please watch this video till the end and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. So let's quickly move on to the problem. And the problem says that a project schedule has the following characteristics. So in this problem, there are certain activities and time of the particular activity is given along with the precedence and we need to construct the network diagram and draw the critical path and find the effect on the project if the activity F were to take six days. So initially activity F is taking four days. So we need to find out what will be the effect on the project if it takes six days. So let us start here and first of all we will try to construct a network and for that first we will see that which is the unprecedented activity in this particular problem so as we can see that there is only unprecedented activity in this uh, network is activity a so we can start activity a from this starting node so this is activity a which is having a time of two weeks. So activity A is having a time of two weeks. Now for activity B, C and D, we can see that all are presided by A only. So what we will do is we will end this activity A here at this particular node and we can start all the three activities from this particular node. And we need to remember there that there is no need of dummy activity here because all the three activities are preceded by activity A only and A is not being preceded in combination of any other activity. So we can start all the activities from this particular node because at this node we can see that only activity A is completed. So let us draw here this is activity B. This is activity B which is having a time of 3 weeks. Similarly, activity C which is having a time of 4 weeks and activity D which is having a time of 5 weeks. 5 weeks. Now, moving on to activity e activity is preceded activity e is preceded by activity b and as we see along we can see that there is another activity which is preceded by activity b only so we can see here also the two activities are preceded by b only and b is not being in comp uh, uh, b is not being in combination with any other activity so we can directly end the activity b here and we can start activity e and h which is uh, which are preceded by b only so let us start from activity e so activity e is this which takes six weeks now moving on to activity f activity f is preceded by c and d both now as we see downwards we can see that there is another activity which is preceded by d and this activity f is preceded by d and c so we can see that there will be a dummy activity for these two so what we will do is we will end activity d here and activity c here and we will draw a dummy activity from D to C. This is dummy activity DM which consumes no time. Okay. So at this particular node we can say that only activity D is completed and at this particular node activity C and activity D are completed. So we can start activity F from here as it is preceded by activity C and D. So we will start activity F from here which consists of 4 weeks. Now moving on to activity G. Activity G depends on activity D only. So as we have seen here at this node activity D only is completed. 
so we can start activity g from here so this is activity g which consumes seven weeks now moving on to activity h activity h is preceded by activity b only so we will draw activity h from here this is activity h which is preceded by activity b only and it has the time of two weeks now activity i is preceded by e f and g and as we see downward we can see that there is another activity which is preceded by g only so g is in combination with e and f and g is alone here so there, here also we will find a dummy activity so what we'll do is we will end activity g here and we will converge activity e and f at this particular node so at this particular node activity e and f are completed and to show the precedence of g also we will need to draw a dummy activity here from this node to here so this is dm2 let this be dm1 so this is the dummy activity so as we can see that at this node only activity g is completed and at this particular node activity e activity f and activity g is completed through dummy activity so we can start activity i here so this is activity i which consumes three weeks and now activity j which is preceded by activity g only so activity g only is here so this is activity j which consumes the time three weeks now as all the activities are completed now we will see which are what are the activities that are open so h i and j are open so we will converge these activities to a single node and this node is the finishing node where activity h i and j are converged so this is our network diagram now let us start numbering and we will use the fulkerson rule to number these event and according to that the initial event or the starting event is named as one and now we will delete all the outgoing arrows from this starting event so after deleting this activity this outgoing activity we can see that there is a new initial event now we are going to name this number two again what we'll do is we will delete all the outgoing activities from the numbered event that is from one and two so a b c d are deleted and as a result we see that there are two new initial events are created so this will be three this will be four now again we will delete all the outgoing activities from the numbered event so we can see that this will be our new initial event so this will be activity uh, event 5 now again we will delete all the outgoing event activities from the numbered event so we can see that now this will become new initial event so we will number this as 6 similarly again we will delete all the outgoing activities from the numbered event then this will be the new initial event so this will be number seven and finally this is number eight which is the finishing event or finishing node where all the activities are incoming activities and there is no outgoing activity so we have completed our network construction so the first part is completed for network construction now to find out the critical path we first need to calculate the earliest and the latest values so first we'll calculate the earliest value so let us see here when we, uh, when we need to calculate the earliest value or earliest time we will use the forward pass method and in forward, pa forward pass method we will use the maximum value so in forward pass method we will start from the initial or the starting node and as we move ahead if there is only single activity coming at the finishing node so if as uh, for activity uh, for node 2 
as we can see there is only one incoming activity we will simply add this timing to the previous event and if there are more than one activity coming at the point as in case of node 5 we can see that two activities are coming at this point so we will consider the timing of both these activity and we will select the maximum value so let us start calculating for initial event 1 e1 will be 0 now moving on to event 2 or node 2 we can see that only a single arrow is coming here so we will simply add this timing 0 plus 2 is 2 weeks so e2 is equals to 2 now moving on to node 3 as we can see that only a single incoming arrow is here so again we will add this activity 2 plus 3 is 5 so this is e3 which is equal to 5 weeks moving on to node 4 as we can see that for node 4 only a single activity is coming so again we will add this activity this is 2 plus 5 is 7 so e4 here will be equal to 7 now moving on to node 5 at node 5 there are two activities coming in so we will consider both the activities for this activity we can see that here time is 2 2 plus 4 is 6 and here time is 7 7 plus dummy dummy has 0 time so 7 plus 0 is 7 so this is 6 this is 7 and we will select the maximum value here so e5 will be 7 now moving on to sixth node as we can see here that only a single activity is coming in so again we will add this activity this is 7 plus 7 4 so e6 is equal to uh, 14 7 plus 7 is 14 now moving on to seventh node we can see that there are three arrows coming in so we will consider all three and see what will be the time this is 5 5 plus 6 is 11 here it is 7 7 plus 4 is 11 and here it is 14 14 plus dummy dummy has zero time so 14 plus 0 is 14 so we will select the maximum value which is 14 so e7 is equal to 14 now moving on to final node or finishing node we can see that there are three activities coming in so we'll consider all the three times so this will be 5 plus 2 7 here it is 14 plus 3 17 here also it is 14 plus 3 17 so we will select the maximum value which is coming as 17 so e8 is coming as 17 weeks now we have calculated the earliest value at all the nodes we are going to calculate next the latest time and the latest time is calculated by using backward pass method in which we will use the minimum value so let us see that in backward pass method we will start from the finishing node and as we move ahead we will subtract the value so before that we will take the initial value of latest time that is l8 is equal to 17 as same as the project completion time that is earliest value at the final load so this will be the initial value we have taken and as we move ahead suppose from 8 to 7 if there is a single outgoing arrow from 7 we will simply decrease this activity time from this latest time and if there are more than one outgoing arrow from a node then among them we will select the minimum value so let us start solving as we move from 8 to 7 we can see that there is only one outgoing arrow so we will subtract simply 14 minus 3 uh, sorry 17 minus 3 is 14 so l7 here is 14 now moving on to node 6 from node 6 we can see that there are two outgoing arrows so this will be 14 14 minus dummy now dummy has zero time so 14 minus 0 is 14 and as we see here this is 17 17 minus 3 is also 14 so both the values are same so l6 is equal to 14 now moving on to node 5 as we can see in node 5 there is only a single outgoing arrow so we will decrease this activity into this latest time 
so this is 14 14 minus 4 is 10 so l5 here is equal to 10 now moving on to l uh, fourth node we can see that there are two outgoing activities here so we will consider both as we can see here l is 10 10 minus 0 because dummy activity consumes 0 time so 10 minus 0 is 10 and from here l6 is 14 14 minus 7 is 7 so we will select the minimum value so l4 will become 7 now moving on to l3 l3 here as we can see that there are more than one outgoing arrow so we will see that for this the latest time is 17 17 minus 2 is 15 and for this l7 is 14 14 minus 6 is 8 so we will select the minimum value here so l3 will be 8 and now moving on to node 2 uh, from node 2 we can see that three activities are outgoing so we will consider all three values so this is 8 8 minus 3 is 5 this is 10 10 minus 4 is 6 and this is 7 7 minus 5 is 2 so again we will select the minimum value here so l2 will be equal to 2 now moving on to the initial node this is 2 minus 2 equal to 0 so l1 is equal to 0 so now we have calculated all the earliest and latest times at each node now in order to find out the critical path we need to see that at uh, at which nodes the value of e and l are equal so we can see here that at node 1 e and l are equal at node 2 e and l are equal at node 3 e and l are not equal at node 4 e and l are equal at node 4 e and l are equal at node 5 e and l are not equal at node 6 e and l are equal at node 7 e and l are equal and at node 8 e and l are equal so we can see that now to show the critical path we will draw lines containing these activities where e and l are equal so we will draw line here this is 1 to 2 2 to 4 2 to 4 4 to 6 6 to 7 and 7 to 8 now we can see here this is our critical path a d g dummy and i and if we look closely we can see that this critical path can also be joined through one node one two four six and through activity j eight because these two are having same time so this is also correct now in this particular problem we can see that we are obtaining two critical path so it is possible in a network where more than one critical path is possible so let us see here so the first critical path the first critical path we are getting is one node one two four four six seven and eight and the second critical path we are getting is second critical path we are getting is 1 2 4 6 and rather than going through 7 we can directly move on to 8 so these are the two critical path and we can also show them in terms of activities so the first critical path will be activity a d g dummy and i or it can also be shown as a d g and j so in this particular problem we have seen that there are two critical path that are existing in this network diagram so we have find the critical path and after finding out we have seen that there are two possible critical path in this particular network diagram 
Now moving on to the third point, it says that find the effect on the project if the activity F were to take six days. So if the activity F initially which is taking four days, if it takes six days, what will be the effect? That means if there is any possibility that the critical path changes or not. So we do not need to draw another diagram to calculate that taking the value of F as 6. We just need to find out the value of total float. As we know that the total float shows that the maximum time by which an activity can be delayed. So let us find the total float for these uh, for this activity F. So this is the total float for activity F here and the formula is L J minus E I minus of D I J. So we have already considered, uh, we have already learned in previous lectures that how we calculate float values very easily and how we can remember these formulas without mugging that up. So let us see here the value of LJ is 14. So because I is the initial event uh, and J is the finishing event. So LJ is 14, L7 is 14. 14 minus EI. EI is this E57. So this will be 14 minus 7 minus of time of activity dij time of activity here is 4 so if we take the value 4 here we can see that the value coming here is 14 minus 11 is 3 so 3 weeks is the time now we can see that after calculating the total float it is clear that activity f can be delayed by three weeks without affecting the critical path or we can say that without affecting the total time of the project. So uh, from moving four weeks to six weeks, we are having an increment of two weeks and we can delay this activity by three weeks. So we can conclude from here that even if we take the value of F as six weeks then also the critical path of the diagram does not change and only the float value of activity F changes so it is clear that if activity 6 were to take six days the critical path does not change only the float value for activity F changes so I hope you understand this lecture. If you like this lecture, please share the lecture. Have a nice day. Thank you.